Paul, you're all about the ABL Plus Foundation. Tell us a little about because Joe has no idea what that is. I've okay. I know I could tell you at this point, but why don't you? Tell <laughs> me? Um, well, the ABL Plus Foundation is a uh, nonprofit foundation that was founded by myself and uh, some doctors and some other folks. Um, I am a patient. Uh, the illness is called a beta lipoproteinemia. It is one of the rarest illnesses on the planet. There's about 150 or so people that have it. Um, so it is very rare. And, and what ABL is, is that we are born without the ability to absorb uh, fat from our diet. Uh, and if we oh. can't absorb fat, then we can't absorb the fat soluble vitamins such as A, E, and K, and in some cases D. Um, so we started a nonprofit. I'm, I'm 57. Um, we have kids all the way down to, I know of one in Australia who's like six months old. So they're oh, still wow. being diagnosed. And, and that's the shame of it is that, you know, here we are 60 plus years later since it was first discovered. And, and there's so little known about it that we're still having children diagnosed with it because and it takes so long because it's such a rare illness mm -hmm. that uh, doctors never think of it when when they look at what's wrong with a, a child. It takes anywhere. I was I was eight months old when I was diagnosed. I know people who were in their teens or early twenties when they were diagnosed. Um, so it's, yeah, is there an actual test for the diagnosis, or is it more like? Um, they, they figure it out by omission because you don't have all of these other things. It has to be ABL. Like, how do they figure that out? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, there there oh. are tests. <laughs> um, they can do a very, very simple blood test. And uh, if they look at your red blood cells under the microscope and they look like, um, like the cog of a wheel, um, that is a telltale sign because that's not how red blood cells usually look. So that should give them an indication to look in the direction of, of ABL. And we cover two other illnesses that are the same. They're different mutations of the same gene. Uh, it's a genetic disorder. Um, and yes, they, they can do a genetic test as well. But And, and there are some others they can do. My cholesterol, they can test anybody with ABL for their cholesterol levels. And I don't know if you know what yours is, Joe or Barry, but mine is. I actually do. <laughs> Mine has never been above 50. So, wow. Um, yeah, because they, you can't absorb the cholesterol, so none gets yeah. into your system. Jo so, Joe, is what's that, yours is at that... then? Oh, hold on, Joe. You're such a oh. smart guy. I, everybody knows their cholesterol. I doubt it. I guess <laughs> maybe. I don't. What's yours? Oh, oh, um, God, what was my age? If his is, if Paul's is 50 or lower, it's good. Is, like, the cholesterol's good. It's like, well, what Two to four hundred is usually about normal. Uh, it was like no, it was like was it was it two? It's like two twenty, I think. It wasn't that? Bad. It wasn't bad at all. That's it that's pretty bad. normal. That, that's yeah. fine. I wanted yeah. to ask about like you said that the red blood cells they look like cogs of a wheel. Mm -hmm. it does, is it look like that because like the spaces that are supposed to absorb the fat are just missing? Then do you I, know? I'm, not, I'm just I'm not sure why part. the why this it's called a canthocytosis is the clinical term for that particular part and i, I don't know why they come out uh shaped irregularly like that but but it is a telltale sign that all patients with these illnesses have and like i said it, actually we had a, a guy who who we recently found us who is in his 20s and that was how he was diagnosed his mom was a lab technician and they always knew he had something wrong, but they, they couldn't figure out what the doctors had no idea. And when he was like 19, he went into his mom's work one day and she said, hey, do you want to see what your blood looks like under a microscope? And he said, sure. And they drew blood and they saw this and his mom went, well, that's not right. That They're not supposed to look like that. Oh, wow. And so that, that's how he got started on his what we call a diagnostic journey, which some people's takes years and some people don't. But um, yeah, so why they're shaped like that, I, I, I'm sure a doctor could tell you. I, I don't know the answer. 
I, I understand. So is that why, because of ABL, is that why you were out in DC recently? It, yeah. it is. So we, we, two years ago, we were, um, we, we were a fairly new foundation. We were formed in 2019, right before the pandemic. Um, and in 21, we were admitted to the National Organization of Rare Diseases. Oh, cool. Um, okay. And so they have an annual summit in Washington, DC and they pay for a representative from uh, every foundation that wants to go uh, to go to DC to participate in this summit. So uh, I went last year was the first one and then I just went about three weeks ago um, to the second, my second one. Uh, so it's called the Nord Summit and it's a lot of doctors and researchers and other foundations all getting together and pharmaceutical companies, which is a, a big thing uh, yep. talking about rare diseases, because there are over 7,000 rare diseases, 95% of which have no treatment or cure. And wow. so that's obviously something they're trying to change. And so ours has a treatment. Ours it may not be a great treatment, but it is a treatment. And that is that we, number one, our diet has to be almost non-fat because we can't handle anything with fat in it. Mm -hmm. And number two, we take massive doses of vitamins um, to try okay. and get as much vitamins into our system that our system isn't absorbing on its own. Um, but ours is unusual that we have those treatments. So yeah, yeah we it, it's called the Nord Summit, and and it, it's a great thing. Yeah, we, I mean, Joe, we did a whole pot. There's a podcast mm -hmm. out there called the ABL Plus uh, Living Ultra Rare. Mm -hmm. Is what okay. it's called, Living Ultra Rare. And Paul and I get into it get into the details mm -hmm. and we have doctors on and patients mm -hmm. that uh, have ABL and talk about it. Wow. That and, sounds uh, really cool. Yeah, man. ABLfoundation.org is the website. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I got to get a plug in. You know that. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's interesting that tonight's topic is AI comes for classic rock because that was actually a topic at the Nord summit, not classic rock, but, using AI in medicine, um, right. which is really, really interesting. And they think with the use of AI, they can do a lot um, as far as like clinical trials go, because the problem with running a clinical trial for, for a drug manufacturer with a rare disease is that there are so few people. It, yeah. You know, we have 100 people, 150 people around the world, most of which probably don't even know that there could be a clinical trial. Um, so with the, the use of AI, they can use it to create virtual patients and virtual placebo people okay. um, to be able to test the effects of their drugs on people that are not people, that are AI. And That's nuts. Oh, AI also uh, can more quickly put together different combinations to create mm -hmm. new medicines that might uh, sure. be able to solve some of these rare diseases that would take humans years and years and years and ai mm -hmm. will do it in like a day yeah yeah and the other big topic of discussion that was kind of coupled in with ai i think was that they believe using gene editing that they will be able to cure most rare diseases uh, in the future so that was a big deal too um, oh yeah you know i just um there was a article this weekend that uh, scientists were able to use CRISPR to get rid of sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a big deal. That's a, like a real, real big deal. It is, yeah. So, Here it comes. I, the Terminator's coming to inject you. <laughs> ah, it just appeared. Yeah. You know those little tiny nano robots that we've been hearing about? They're mm -hmm. coming. They're going to come in there and clean up. They're going to clean up this town. 